All right, y'all, welcome back to Common Arms Channel. So I recently did a reaction video about the, the Swedish Marines uh, or their amphibious corps, and now I actually got a recommendation for their uh, their Jaeger units. Uh, and from my understanding, what their Jaeger unit is, is sort of like a, our, our long range reconnaissance and also kind of like our pathfinders. So uh, a unit that's basically meant to be self-sufficient and you know, go a little bit forward of uh, all the other army units, sort of do their own thing and, and survive on their own and uh, be, be reliable enough to complete the mission. So as you can imagine with units like this, you need a lot of squared away people, a lot of trustworthy individuals um, who are competent in their job to make sure that they can do it without a whole lot of micromanagement or supervision. Now I sort of take a peep at each video before I uh, check it out, just so I can, I can get a feel for it. Now, already I can see these guys are pretty squared away. Now, with the U.S. military and being grown up in the U.S. military, you sort of get an idea that the U.S. military is just far superior to anyone else. And that may be true when you're talking about, like, the Navy, um, potentially the Air Force, and just equipment in general. But, you know, I can have a, I have a very good respect for how other units run their infantry, how they support their infantry. And this Jaeger, this Jaeger unit looks like. They get some pretty solid support, and they also have a, a lot of pretty solid individuals. They're very well disciplined, and I mean, that's that's a big thing that the U.S. takes for granted because we haven't really had a war fought on our land, is a lot of countries will be more disciplined just based off of the fact that they're more likely to have someone come onto their territory. So we'll check this video out, and uh, yeah, we'll see what we think about it. Jägarbataljonen i arméns främsta förband för strid på djupet av motståndarens gruppering. Bataljonen har en särskilt utvecklad förmåga att med hög uthållighet verka i subarktisk, ödemarks och bergsterräng. Striden på djupet är ett värdefullt och nödvändigt komplement till brigadernas strid. Det handlar ytterst om att bidra till att påverka motståndarens krigföringsförmåga. Okay, so this introduction might be a little more interesting if you can actually speak Swedish, because I'm guessing that's what he's speaking. Um, but yeah, I, I'm enjoying just looking at the land itself. But I think it's just like a little background of the, the Jaeger Battalion itself. So you can sort of get a, a feel for what sort of environment that they're, they're actually operating in. Genom att långsiktigt bryta ner dennes moraliska och fysiska kraft. Jägarstriden bidrar till att forma motståndaren för ett avgörande. Jägarstriden utförs med små och lättrörliga enheter som med olika stridsmedel och metoder stör, försvårar och hindrar motståndarens verksamhet. Genom att operera på djupet inhämtar jägarna kontinuerligt information om motståndaren, terrängen eller andra förhållanden. Och That is a very solid hide site, um, which is basically what you would see if there's like a reconnaissance element or a sniper team. That's something that they would build themselves called a hide site. So that one looks really solid. That looks super sophisticated. Now already off the bat, I can sort of see um, their their gear itself um, kind of looks a little bit older. But their weapons are very solid, and even still, even if you have like older equipment or what have you, uh, like that doesn't really mean anything because you can sort of get used to it. And it, it's really all about how you you work with what you, what you have. You can see they're actually like using vegetation on their helmets, and a lot of people, especially in the U.S. military, like just forget to do that. They get very lazy with that. But if you're not breaking out the pattern of your helmet. It doesn't really matter what sort of helmet you're using because you know you, you're going to be getting shot at. They're going to be able to see your helmet if you're not, you know, camouflaging it appropriately. So uh, I can respect that they're actually doing that. Bidrar därmed till högre chefs lägesuppfattning. Jägarbataljonen är därför också en utomordentlig underrättelseresurs. Terrängkännedomen 
Det dolda uppträdandet i kombination med en utspridd gruppering bidrar till att jägarna snabbt och oväntat kan slå till mot motståndarens gränssättande resurser och högvärdiga mål långt bakom fronten. So you can see already a big shift in climate. So now they're working more in a, a snowy environment where they're actually adapting their camouflage as such. And you know, they have these, these awesome snowmobiles. They're shooting from the snowmobiles. So they're, they're definitely training on what they need to be you know, proficient on. So they're definitely, they're, they're, they know their terrain. They're using the appropriate equipment for it. And they're actually training with that equipment, which is, which is very awesome, very good to see. De mål jägarbataljonen verkar mot kan vara motståndarens långräckviddiga bekämpningssystem, luftvärn, ledningsplatser, försörjningsvägar och underhållsbaser. Allt i enlighet med högre chefs prioriteringar. Tantalar! I längden bidrar detta till att motståndaren tvingas till motåtgärder som binder resurser och begränsar handlingsfriheten över hela det operativa djupet. Jag ska upp ett försvarslag ner framåt. Okay, so I'm not sure what sort of training scenario they're doing. They might just be doing stuff for the video. Um, but you can see with these, uh, they look like they're actually using AT4s. I'm surprised they're not using the Carl Gustav, considering that's the name of their king. But maybe they're just using, like maybe the Jaegers just use the AT4 because you can throw it away. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, this might just be an older video as well. But yeah, you can see uh, they did a volley fire, which is basically when one person fires AT4, another person fires AT4, and they're actually doing with three people, which is pretty interesting. So uh, normally with this, you'd have like a machine gun just to, to keep everyone fixed in place. But if someone's shooting an AT4 at you, um, if the first one doesn't get you and the second one doesn't get you, you're probably going to be getting down for the third one. So either way, the, you can fix in place with a machine gun or you can fix in place with other AT4s. So, I, I guess that is a method, um, but yeah, you can see their camouflage, their vegetation looks really solid. Uh, it, it's, it fits the environment very well. When you have these conifers and these like, uh, you know, pine trees and whatnot, those are really good for vegetation because they tend to last a little bit longer. The needles don't change colors very rapidly. So it's definitely a, a good thing to use for vegetation, for camouflage. And it's definitely serving them well as far as breaking up their appearance. But. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking how they're doing everything so far. Förutom att lösa spanings- och stridsuppgifter kan plutonsenheten även leda flyg- och artilleriunderstöd. För att jägarnas insatser ska kunna ledas, samordnas och för att bygga upp ytterligare uthållighet i form av exempelvis kvalificerad sjukvård krävs speciellt och särskilt anpassade stödfunktioner. Dessa funktioner ingår organisatoriskt i en förstärkningsskvadron i bataljonen. Här finns specialister på ledning, samband, sjukvård, alpin rörlighet, transporter och underhåll av jägarförband. Förstärkningsskvadronen är en del av jägarbataljonen. So their patrolling looks good. They have good dispersion. Um, they're not getting too bunched up or anything. That's basically what I mean by that. 
and you can see they have they have vehicles that actually serve certain roles. Um, so we've the Marine Corps and the Army has been trying to implement these sort of all-terrain vehicles a little bit more, like these quads. Um, and you can see they're using very well, it's sort of like their their medevac vehicle. So that's pretty interesting to see. Um, but yeah, they, they seem like they have some pretty solid vehicles and equipment to pretty much serve a certain purpose, and they're using it well. Uh, a lot of times, uh, we'll have stuff in the U.S. Army or U.S. Marine Corps. And a lot of it doesn't really get used as well as it could be. People don't train as much. Um, it kind of just ends up gathering dust until a commander comes in and says, hey, look, like, let's, let's start using this equipment again. So it's good to see that they're actually getting good training and actually using all the stuff that they have. We are going to make the Jäger Battalion system to have full effect. Jägarbataljonen är aldrig synlig för motståndaren, men skapar en bredd av... Så jag vet inte om det bent hat är en stil eller om de gör det för en för taktisk reason. Det är utan mig, men det ser intressant ut. Att vara ärlig, deras gillisuits inte ser så solid. Du kan se att de har sådana här kläder, som du kallar dem. Normalt med en gillisuit har du en burlap eller en nätting, och sen har du en burlap eller en nätting, och sen har du en natural natural vegetation som du har på till det. But you can see with them, they sort of have these cloth leaves and it doesn't really fit their environment too well, especially with all these conifers and all these, you know, these softwood trees with pine needles and whatnot. It doesn't really fit. The color isn't going to fit exactly. So uh, I'm not sure if it's like a pre-made thing and they normally just give their snipers these ghillie suits. But yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't look too good in my opinion. Hot, some undergräver motståndarens vilja. Och förlamar dennes handlingsfrihet. Jag tror på vinden ser ut att blåsa typ tre meter i sekunder från klockan tre. För operativa och taktiska förflyttningar av jägarförband utnyttjas ofta helikopter. Där både personal, utrustning och förnödenheter kan lyftas över stora avstånd på kort tid. Jägarbataljonens kärna och främsta taktiska enhet. Now with the US Marine Corps, we have our we have woodland camouflage, we have desert camouflage. That's basically just depending on which environment we're deployed to or which geographical location we're stationed on in the United States. Now, it's generally West Coast has desert, East Coast has woodland. So it's interesting for them how they have to go between, you know, woodland camouflage and winter camouflage. But at the same time, the sustainment is very different for each one because with woodland environment, you need to focus more on, you know, the, the mobility is not as good, uh, the visibility is not as good, you have mud, you have water to worry about. And then when you're talking about the snow, the sustainment is going to be completely different. Uh, generally, I'm sure their, their uh, equipment is going to function about the same just because the temperature might stay generally the same. Um, but yeah, it's definitely tricky with the sustainment. Now it looks like they're doing a lot of survival stuff right now, which is really solid because that's a big thing that the U.S. military lacks for their, their basic infantry is uh, survival techniques. So actually going out there and just, you know, not even worrying about the logistics, just having to survive on your own. That's a big uh, crutch that the U.S. military should probably address, in my opinion. Det är en lättrörlig, självständig och uthållig enhet som utan tillförsel av förnödenheter verkar under påfrestande klimat och terrängförhållanden.
Utbildningen till jägarsoldat är lång och både fysiskt och mentalt krävande. Den enskilde jägarsoldaten är jägarbataljonens viktigaste byggsten. Därför är både de psykiska och fysiska kraven på individen mycket högt ställda. So I imagine being part of this Jacob Battalion you need some very uh, fit disciplined individuals. Now with any country that isn't landlocked it's good to have some sort of water survival training or fitness assessment but I mean it seems like them they're taking things a little bit um, to the next to the next level so to speak which is really good you can see um, they they probably have a very solid group as far as fitness is concerned and it, it's better to be you know more proficient with this and not necessarily need it then all of a sudden you need this this skill especially swimming and you know no one knows how to swim or no one knows how to swim proficiently so it's a very good thing for them to be working on so that's solid So that was a really well produced video. I'll give them credit for that. So that was very solid. Some of the stuff you'll see with US Army combat camera and US Marine Corps combat camera is like very much half-assed in a sense. But yeah, that was really solid. And you can see they have these giant rucksacks and that's pretty standard with any light infantry. You need to be pretty good at moving heavy things far distances, but it's more pertinent to them because with these long range elements, these pathfinder elements, they need to be good at doing that because at a moment's notice their mission could change and when your mission changes it's generally not like okay you can stay in the same location just do do this it's normally like hey we don't need you here we need you all the way over here so it's just the nature of the beast but these guys seem like they're pretty competent at it uh, their their skills look very refined they look very well disciplined they're physically fit um, and that's pretty much all you can ask for when you're talking about these specific uh, units. It's always cool to look at different militaries and different units to see what they put emphasis on as far as their training. And with them, they're doing a very good job. They're training their sustainment, their camouflage is solid, they have their survivability skills, and that's a very good focus for them to, for them to have especially. And uh, again, I would say in the US military, it can get a little bit lackadaisical as far as some aspects. Each unit needs to make sure that they can balance it and focus it uh, directly towards their units and their, their mission state. But yeah, very solid. If you guys have any of the videos, again, please keep the recommendations coming. This was a really solid recommendation. I, I try to look at everyone's video that they send me. Um, sometimes they are either a little bit too long or sometimes it's just uh, big gaps, so I need to edit it a lot and it just gets a little bit choppy. But this was a pretty solid video to do a reaction to, so again, I really do appreciate it. I mean, if you guys want want me to at least check something out, feel free to send it to me and I'm always, I'm always willing to learn a little bit. So uh, if I want to do a reaction, at least I can check it out. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I think these guys are squared away. And it, again, we have a lot of squared away military units out there that I wasn't aware of. So it's always good to sort of put a spotlight on them. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will see you all in the next one.